Assalamu alaikum. Our today's discussion topic is ovary. It is an important female internal reproductive organ. Our learning content, gross anatomy, location of ovary or boundary of ovary and fossa, relation with peritoneum, histology, blood supply, function and its development. This figure showing the internal reproductive organ of a female that includes vagina, uterus, two fallopian tube, one pair of ovaries. Now the gross anatomy of ovary. It is two in number, almond shape, size is four centimeter in length, two centimeter width, one centimeter thick. Color is grayish pink, border two. One is anterior or posterior. Anterior border is also called mesoovarian border and posterior border is also called free border. Surface. It has two surfaces. One is medial surface and one is lateral surface. It has two end. One is tubal end. One is uterine end. Weight is approximately 4 gram. Location. It is located in ovarian fossa. From this figure, we only see the histological structure and the growth of ovary. It is the tubal end and it is the uterine end. It attaches to the uterus with ligament of ovary. And it has two border. One is anterior border or mesoovarian border through which it is attached to the posterior border of the broad ligament. Now the boundaries of ovarian fossa. It's also also called as a fossa of Aldier. Anteriorly, it has internal iliac. It has inter external iliac artery and vessel, and the obliterated ob uh, obliterated umbilical artery. And posteriorly, it has internal iliac artery and vein and ureter. And inferiorly, it has fallopian tube or uterine tube. Now, okay, anteriorly external iliac vessel, broad ligament, and obliterate umbilical artery. Posteriorly, it ureter and internal iliac vessel and inferiorly uterine tubes in the free margin of broad ligament. Now the peritoneal relation of ovaries. Each ovary is attached to posterior surface of broad ligament by a short peritoneal fold called mesoovarium. Ovary is almost covered by peritoneum except mesoovarian border. Mesoovarium acts as a hilum that is the opening of ovary through which nerve and vessel enter into the ovary. Okay, this is the anterior layer of the broad ligament and this is the posterior layer of the broad ligament. The ovary is entirely covered by peritoneum but along the mesoovarium or the posterior layer of the broad ligament it is reflected and continuous with posterior layer of broad ligament and form the meso ovaries it's also known as hilum or opening of the ovaries through which ovarian vessels nerves enter or exit through this point this is the meso ovarium now the histology of the ovary from outer to inner outer is called the cortex this is the cortex and deep inside it is known as medulla that histologically ovary is from outer cortex and inner medulla inner Medulla only contains or comp composed of loose annular tissue and contains the blood vessels and nerves. 
okay this is the epithelial lining that is from the low cuboidal epithelium and it also contains the germ cell or follicle endothelium also known as surface epithelium or germinal epithelium but it never give rise to follicle or orbum production these are the developing follicle at the 12 days of menstru 14 days of menstrual cycle ovum released after releasing it's from corpus luteum and it is the hilum through which vessels entry and exit occur these are the rust histology of the ovary now the blood supply first of all arterial supply ovaries is supplied by the ovarian artery which is the branches of abdominal aorta and it also get rise arterial supply from ovarian branch of uterine artery the, this both artery anastomose and gives supply to the ovaries now venous drainage right ovarian vein drain into the inferior vena cava directly but left ovarian vein first drain into the left renal vein and this renal vein drain into the inferior vena cava from figure we see that this is the ovarian artery that is the direct branch of abdominal aorta and this is the ovarian branches of uterine artery this is the tortuous uterine artery and it is the ovarian branch this both make anastomosis here and give supply to the ovary okay and uh, this is the venous supply figure or venous drainage figure this is ovary the vein after collecting blood form a pampiniform plexus this is the pampiniform plexus this pampiniform plexus form around the ovarian artery and then this pampiniform plexus give rise a single ovarian vein that is right ovarian vein that is left ovarian vein right ovarian vein direct this is inferior vena cava right ovarian vein directly drain into the inferior vena cava and left ovarian vein first drain into left renal vein then into the over into inferior vena cava nerve supply ovaries get sympathetic nerve supply from t10 and t a eleven segment of spinal cord. This is T10 and T11 spinal cord. They form the ovarian plexus and give nerve supply, sympathetic nerve supply to the ovary. And presympathetic supply is derived from sacral two, three, and four. This give the parasympathetic supply to the ovary. Lymphatic drainage. Lymphatic drainage follow ovarian vein and drain into the pre-aortic and para-aortic group of lymph node. Function. Function of ovary is very important for maintaining reproduction in female. Its main function is to production of ovum. It causes the maturation of the germ cell and release during ovulation and helps in fertilization and is another important role is to play formation of hormones that is stereogenesis its main hormone production is estrogen and progesterone these two hormones maintain the reproductive life of a female by reproduction now the last topic of our discussion that is development we will discuss development in short first of all each ovary is developed from gonadal ridge and gonadal ridge that is the thickening of selenic epithelium it is found in the abdominal wall this gonadal ridge received germ cell from yolk sac this gonad re remains indifferentiated up to seven weeks we can't differentiate between ovary and testis in absence of SRY gene, finally, definitive gonad is formed. If SRY gene present, this indifferentiated gonad uh, form testis 
if there is absence of SRY gene, there is formation of ovary. And the ovary developed two weeks later after testis. If testis don't develop, then ovary developed. Okay, this is the figure of development of ovaries. This is the gonadal ridge, the thickening of the ceramic epithelium. It receives the germ cell through dorsal mesentery. It shifted from yolk sac to a dorsal mesentery and comes into the gonadal ridge. There, proliferation occurs and formation of surface epithelium and this germ cell which derived from yolk sac give rise to formation of different primordial germ cell this is the formation of surface epithelium that is uh, from from the ceramic epithelium and germ cell which derived from yolk sac endodermal in origin and later on is formation of medulla this is mesenchymal in origin okay first of all ovaries present or started developed in abdomen then descent occur at seven to nine month in this process involves gavanoculum and processes vaginalis and then it's become a pelvic organ the source of cortex is covering epithelium from coelomic epithelium and germ cell from endodermal and derived from yolk sac and mes medulla is mesenchymal is origin and this all about our today's lecture and uh, in short the anatomy of ovary so stay tuned to know the later discussed topic thank you assalamu alaikum